Alright, welcome back. We're going to pick up where we left off. Um, this is Mac 1340. We're doing our PLC uh, setup lecture 2 here. So, working with the Siemens 1500 PLCs. And uh, I've got everything set up now. My PLC is powered on. My Ethernet cable is connected to my computer. All right, And I have my IO SIM uh, connected to it as well so that uh, we can see some inputs and outputs and how they're working. Uh, with this. If we were using the 314 uh, PLCs, we'd have an MPI setup. But let's go ahead and get through it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, compile again just to, to verify and uh, make sure everything's uh, good to go. And then we're going to go ahead and download to the PLC here. So make sure PLC is on. Make sure that your Ethernet port is connected when you're doing this. All right. And it's very, very important. Okay. So what we need to do is it says type of PLC uh, interface. We are going to select the PNIE, okay? And the interface here uh, for us is going to be, I believe, the uh, the Intel on mine. Um, that's my only laptop. I'm not doing anything Wi-Fi on these uh, PLCs, so this is my only uh, direct line connection here, my Ethernet cable, okay? So I'm going to connect this. Notice nothing shows up yet, so I click Start Search. All right, give it a second. And then as long as your PLC is on, so make sure you have your PLC turned on, okay? And your Ethernet cable needs to be plugged into the PLC and to the uh, laptop that you're working on. Okay, so notice what comes up. It actually shows uh, that I have PLC underscore one, it tells me that it's an S7-1500. Right, it tells me my interface and it actually tells me my, uh, my address, my uh, internet address or ethernet address on here. Okay, so I've got this device. I'm going to click, make sure that it's highlighted. That's my target device here. And I'm going to hit uh, load. And it's going to assign automatically. Yes, this is where you can change this if you need to for whatever network uh, that you're on. For That's more real world versus us in the classroom, we're just going to use the default and uh, what we're running on. So it tells me that the address was good. All right, and it asked me if I want to save these settings. Yes, I tend to like don't show this message again because I don't want to see it a thousand times when I go through. All right, it tells me the device is ready for loading. I'm going to continue without synchronization. Now, uh, make sure that we don't have any loads or any issues here. Uh, sometimes you might have to just correct something uh, through one of the actions here. Uh, but go ahead, as long as your load button's good, right now we're good to go. Let's go ahead and load it onto the PLC. All right, and then it's ready to start the module. Everything's good. There's no errors. If you have errors or anything that come up in class, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll have to double check a couple of things, and I can help you through that. And then we're going to go ahead and click Finish. All right, so now... What have we done? We've successfully loaded, okay, our program onto the PLC. I'm looking at my PLC. It's in the run mode, all right? I'm going to go up here and click the little glasses where it says monitoring on and off. So when I click this, it monitors it live. So now I can see exactly what's going on here. I'm going to lower uh, the message stuff down here just a little bit so we can see both networks. Uh, operating at the same time on the screen here. Okay, so what do we got going on here? This is the start button. Anything that's green, that's where it's live. So I haven't hit the start button yet. All right, so anything that's blue dashed is not live right now. So I don't have the stop button closed and I the stop. Notice that uh, the start button here, it's a normally open close or normally open contact on the first line. All right, and on the second line, I used a normally closed contactor. Notice the normally open one, okay, it's, it's green on one side, blue on the other, so it's not operating right now. It's not energized. Notice the normally closed contactor on the second rung is energized. It's green. So it means that it's the opposite, right? It's not whatever this contactor is starting. So it should be opposite. All right, so I'm going to click my I.O. simulator here. So when I do that, if I flick switch one, okay, I should be able to get some interaction on this thing. So we're going to do that here in a second. 
So before I do this, I just want to make note, if you're on our Festo uh, connection, you got to make sure that you turn the strobe on at the bottom right hand corner. If you're using the Amitrol uh, connected uh, trainer, you don't have to hit anything, you should be able to hit your switch. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to hit bit 0.0, .0 alright, so you're going to watch the screen here. When I flip this switch, my start button turns on, alright, notice how the entire line is now energized and the green light should be on. Well, on my Festo trainer, my bit zero LED is turned on, so I have that turned on. You can't see that right now. Um, I'm gonna show you that piece in class. But, you know, I'm simulating this hitting switches. So if I turn the start button off now, notice the contactors go back. So I'm gonna hit um, my, my switch two here so that it looks like my stop button is closed. Notice now the entire red light line is on the entire second rung is live because I've turned, I've energized 0 0.1 and 0.0, .0 is not energized in the first rung, but since we're the opposite in the second rung, the red light is on. So right now on my Festo trainer, my second light that I told to turn on is on. So what happens now if I flip the first switch, all right, the green light goes on and the red light goes off, okay, because they're opposites of each other. So we can see how the normally open and normally closed obviously affect each other. So we've used some really expensive software and some really fancy programming to turn a green light on and a red light off and, and vice versa. But this is how you're able to simulate and see what's going on so it's live. All right, so very, very important uh, that you remember how to do this. So what did we go through in this place? In the first lecture, we talked about PLC setup setting up your I.O. Uh, uh, tags and your I.O. addresses and writing the block, writing the basic ladder logic. And this one, all right, we compiled, we downloaded to the PLC, we showed how to interface uh, with the Ethernet cable, all right, and then we showed how to put the glasses on over here and monitor the system live. And you can't see what I'm doing because I'm flipping switches, but you guys will be doing uh, that in class as well. So each time I flip one of these, you can be able to monitor. But the important thing is, guys, when you monitor, you have to make sure that you download your program to the PLC first before you monitor, else you're going to be monitoring someone else's program or a different station that's on there or anything along those lines, whatever else is on there. And you could be getting false data. So make sure before you go live and online that you've downloaded your PLC configuration and your PLC block program on there before you start simulation. And then if you're not seeing the green, let me know. It means something happened and you didn't connect. Uh, either your Ethernet port's not plugged in on either one of the, on the PLC or on the laptop, or you forgot to turn power on somewhere, or you didn't turn the strobe on the Festo. All right, uh, a couple of different things. So. Uh, yes, basic program point for this was showing you how to set everything up, be able to download to the PLC and interact with it. So these, the first two lectures, so lecture one and lecture two of this, is just PLC setup, guys, but it's the fundamentals that you need to have that you're going to use for every single program uh, that you do in here. I'll probably do a couple lectures on maybe doing ANDs, ORs, inverters, and that sort of thing. Uh, that you can go over as we get through later. And then I'll, I have some separate timer and counter uh, lectures that I'll go through for the different types of count counters and timers as we go through this. Else, guys, the rest of it, you know, we're going to be hands on uh, in class uh, doing a bunch of ladder logic and, and actually operating, you know, real equipment. We're going to test everything on our simulator, you know, with our, uh, our eight LEDs and our eight switches. And then we're going to go over to the trainer and, and program. And your final is programming. Station one on the 870 trainer. So, else guys, uh, like normal, email me if you have any questions. Uh, Zoom or team meet with me uh, if you need to. Else, I'll see you in class, guys, and have a great day.